Okay, welcome everyone. This is the final webinar in a three-part series um, intended to prepare you for the NorCal Procurement Expo in San Ramon on May 31st. That's this Friday, we're really excited. The other two have already been posted to our website and this one will be posted by tomorrow. Today we'll be reviewing strategies for market research in the government marketplace and how to determine which agencies buy what you sell and then how to actually talk to these government agencies at the expo. So before we get started, I'm gonna briefly talk about the free services that are available to you through the PTAC program. My name is Christina Kunkel. I'm the program director for the NorCal PTAC, the Procurement Technical Assistance Center. And today we are thrilled to have our procurement specialist, Mary Jo Juarez. Um, she was a pre previously a contracting officer for the U.S. Navy, so she knows firsthand what government agencies want to see and hear from potential small business vendors. Ah. <laughs> um, so my slides are kind of all over the place. Here we go. The NorCal BTEC is a nonprofit organization. We are um, our goal is to help businesses successfully compete and succeed in the government marketplace. We're funded by primarily by the Defense Logistics Agency with supplemental grant funding from other state and local funds. That means that all of our services are provided at no cost to you. We're hosted by Humboldt State University Sponsored Programs Foundation up in Arcata, California. And last year we helped our clients win more than $166 million in government contract awards. So here is a service area map. Oh, some technical difficulties. <laughs> um, on the left here in green, we have our service area for the general NorCal PTAC program. My office is this red star here in Humboldt County, but we serve this entire region in green here. Um, my team is located all over the Western US, including LA, San Francisco, Sacramento, even New Mexico and Washington states. Mary Jo is from Washington state, who's doing our presentation today. So um, all counseling is provided remotely via phone or video conference. You don't need to leave your home or office to receive assistance. And I searched nationwide to find the best expert specialist to help you succeed. We um, can also connect you with a program to specifically assist those who are already certified as DBEs, Disadvantaged Business Enterprises, and help them win more contracts with transportation agencies like Caltrans, BART, High Speed Rail, transit authorities, um, local governments, all that. And through that program, they can help you in preparing a complete DBE application too. And the service area for that program is Caltrans Districts 1, 2, 3, and 4. That's here on the right. Oh, and if you're joining us today from a county that wasn't shown on the map, there are five other PTACs in California to serve you. There's 94 total PTACs nationwide. There's a link in a couple slides to find your nearest PTAC, or you can call us at the number on the bottom of the screen here, and I'd love to help you find your local PTAC. So we provide three core services, all of which are free to clients within our service area. The first is one-on-one -on -one counseling. Our procurement specialists can help you with getting a DUNS number, SAM registration, certifications, crafting capability statements, basically anything government contracting related that, to help you succeed in a government marketplace. We can also sit down with you individually and help you understand where your business fits in the government marketplace and how to market yourself. And that's kind of what we're gonna focus on today. We also have a paid subscription for a really cool program that aggregates all federal, state, local, and school district purchases in one place. So you can just search by keyword and we can provide custom reports to our clients to help you determine who's already buying what you're selling. That helps you target your marketing. Second, we provide free in-person and virtual workshops like this one on government contracting topics. These webinars and workshops are always free and you can visit our website for more free events. And finally, we can also set up our clients with a free bid matching service with daily access to federal, state, local, and even prime contractor opportunities. So we have prime contractors that reach out to us and ask to advertise via our bid match service. 
Um, those are catered specifically to you based on keywords or NAICS codes. So to apply for um, NorCal PTAC assistance, you can visit our website, click on the big apply now button. You'll be contacted via email, typically within three business days. Um, if you have ever worked with the NorCal SBDC before, there's a little bit of a different process. You can send us an email to request your application. And here's the link I mentioned earlier. If you're outside of NorCal PTAC service area, you can find your local PTAC or SBDC. Um, and yeah, we, so SBDCs I didn't talk about much, but we partner with SBDCs to provide more general business assistance, like help getting access to loans. And before we get started, um, just one more note, today's presenter, Mary Jo, and I, and my entire team will all be at the Expo on May 31st, this Friday. So feel free to join us and chat with us in person. Today, please hold your questions until the end, and at that time, you can either unmute yourself or you can use the virtual chat feature. So with that, let's get started with our procurement specialist, Mary Jo Warris. Thank you so much, Christina. And good morning, everybody. What an incredible, amazing opportunity you have coming up this Friday. I'm so excited for myself and also really, really excited for you. So are you ready? Is your SAM registration current? Have you gone in and updated it with any changes that might have happened in the past year or so? What about your dynamic small business search statement? Is that also current? And the reason that these two items are so important is because after people meet with you at this event, after the prime, the agencies, whether they're local or federal, meet with you, they're gonna go probably to one of these two websites to check it out and make sure that you are registered. So your information there is extremely important. Are your certifications accurate? And have you updated your marketing materials with your certifications? and or your latest projects that you've done. And also updated your elevator speech. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to make your elevator speech stand out a little bit later in this session. So who buys what you sell? Now I think the important thing here to remember is that marketing and doing market research to figure out who buys what you sell is an ongoing process. And it doesn't start or stop with a single conference. It's something that you might wanna be doing, maybe you set aside an hour once a week and just stay up on top of it. So on Friday, we have over 40 confirmed agencies attending federal, state, local, and prime contractors. But oh my goodness, you only have five hours. So how are you gonna to talk to them? Or do you wanna to talk to them all? And how are you going to make an impression? a favorable impression. That's the impression they want to, to work on making. So we're going to discuss putting a plan together for the conference, figuring out who's important for your company, who buys, and what steps you can take to prepare. Okay, And we're going to look at government agencies first. And when we're talking about researching who buys from your companies, there are really two ways to do it. And as we go through this presentation, I'm gonna kind of weave and connect in and out between the two different ways of doing this. The first one is going online through the websites, and we'll, we'll go through a couple of those websites or Googling or whatever, and seeing what these attendees or, or people in the booth are actually buying. The second method is your manner of speech and communication at the event itself where you can come back with so much more information than you're ever going to be able to find online. Figuring out who buys what you sell can be extremely difficult for a couple different reasons. The first one is that the group of people who are your advocates who you're going to be meeting at this conference, they're the small business liaison officers, they're the um, business development people, they're your gatekeepers, but they're a fluid group of people and they're constantly changing. The second reason it can be a little bit difficult is because the departments within the agencies in the government, whether it's state, local, even within the prime contractors, 
they buy so much, it's hard for those individuals sometimes behind the booth to know everything that their company or that their agency is buying. And for those of you who don't know me, just a little bit of history. I was, also, I was a contracting officer like Christina mentioned, but I was also um, the deputy for small business for, for a branch of the Navy. So I was, your, I was your advocate. I was the one on the other side of the booth from you. And one quick story I'd like to share to, with you to illustrate how important this is, is I was at an event and a woman came up to me and she goes, hi, Mary Jo. And I said, hi, you know, we buy architect, um, engineering and environmental service and services. And she says, well, she says, I'm the balloon lady. And I thought, oh, okay. And she said to me, she goes, can you help me? Do you have any points of contact in your network or someone that you know that I can go to to help my company? And I thought, oh, okay, that's an extremely reasonable request and I can help you with that. So I took her business card, which I normally would, up until that point, I normally would wouldn't have done that because she wasn't in within my wheelhouse as an agency. But I took her business card and I went and talked to a couple other branches of the Navy. And lo and behold, the Navy did buy balloons and they bought tremendous amount of balloons. They did those big arches of balloons when the ships came in. They did um, different things because they're very, very family oriented for family events, for their balls. She was able to get a number of contracts and be extremely successful. And I learned a really, really good lesson that I needed to share my network that I had in, in my own pocket with the people who are coming to my booth. And I think you'll find when you're at this event that a lot of the people who are behind those booths have a passion for sharing with you. Okay, earlier we mentioned the dynamic small business search. And this, I know a lot of you, especially all of you who have registered in SAM, know that you go into this and you put information about your company. And I just want to go through a couple examples here with you to make this stronger and more powerful for you after the conference when people are looking up your information. In case, and just a side note, in case you want to go in and and work on this before the conference. You don't have to go through SAM, through Govology. There is a backdoor way to get in to, to update and change your profile in here. This is also a great tool for looking for companies who could be teaming partners for you also. So on this, the screen, on this slide, I've, there's three of them that are highlighted. And these are, all, these are all fine. What's in here is all fine and it's serving a purpose. But let's talk about how we can make it serve your purpose for being in this database better. So the first one on their capabilities narratives talks about computer office equipment and sales. The second one talks about over seven years of experience in all phases of electrical contracting. And the third one talks about a wide range of quality English courses. The most important thing here for an agency or a prime contractor to have when they're in here and they're doing a quick glance at you is for you as a potential contractor to quantify and qualify everything that you can in here. For instance, the first one, computer and office equipment. What does that mean? Do you provide computers? Do you do specialized software? Do you provide Copiers, think about it for just a minute. There's a number of words that could be added that would make that stronger. And if I'm looking in here, it would help me to figure out if you are indeed the one I'm looking for. The second one does qualify, quantify over seven years of experience in all phases of electrical contracting, specializing in design, installation, and maintenance. So they do a good job of that. But a suggestion from me would be to go into a little bit more depth about what they have done. I know these are very specialized here, specialized fields for this company. So if they went into a little more information about the, maybe even a couple of sentences about the detailed scopes 
that they've done, how they've managed more than one project at a time, that type of thing, would help make that stronger. And the last one where it states, we offer a wide range of quality English courses. I don't really have a clue exactly what that means. A wide range, is that two classes, two courses, or is that 80 courses? Quality is kind of a bad word to use to my way of thinking because quality is determined by the each individual who's looking at it. So if you can use other words besides quality, which is really considered a fluff word in there, and explain the English courses a little bit more. Um, all of our qualified U.S. native speaking teachers with extensive experience, um, or all, okay, well, qualified, I'm not sure again what that means, it's kind of a reiteration of what we just talked about. Extensive experience, is that 10 years? Is that two years? I'm not sure exactly what that is. Our teachers are certified. Okay, um, are they certified online? Are they certified through degrees? What does, what does that mean? So, well, nothing is wrong really with he, what's up here to make it stronger and better for you as these companies and agencies go to look at you after they meet you at the event, strengthening this little paragraph about yourself would be a wonderful idea. You could even put your telephone number and even a point of contact in this paragraph if you wanted. I've seen that a few times and as a former agency that would save me from having to go to another screen or another database to look you up. So just for some food, food for thought here. Okay, so I've got a couple screens here about where federal opportunities are found. Um, and like Christina said, you'll have access to this here shortly by tomorrow. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of other ways here in a minute to do market research also, um, you know, through the internet. So don't panic as I flip through this. Um, FedBizOps is a wonderful tool for going in and finding out what the government has, the federal government in particular has out there right now. Um, let me, this is one reason why it becomes so, so convoluted and complicated. Another little story. When I was your small business point of contact, as I mentioned, you would come to me and you would say, um, Mary Jo, you know, I'm selling this. And I would say, oh, great, you know, it fits in with our construction AE. I had those three AE and environmental, those three items that I was trained. I was trained by my agency to talk about. However, what I did not talk about was the fact that our agency did horse logging on old growth forests. We purchased services from people who had goats and dogs, the goats to keep the grass down, the dogs to chase the geese off the runway so that the aircraft, those big fighter planes, could, to, could take off and land without having to worry about hitting a goose. We had a 72 to $100 million a year contract for base operating services. And those services included everything from providing a post office, sewers, automotive repair, uh, laundry, uh, housing, food services. But in the training that I was given, I was not taught initially to share that information with you. And I figured out how to share it with you, again, weaving back into how you look at said biz ops and see the different projects that are coming up. And while you're talking to the people on Friday, sparking a conversation that might make them stop and think about other things that their agency offers because the government buys so much, it's really difficult for one person to remember it all, as hard as you try and as much as you want to be helping individual people. Okay, so when you go to the California, the, the Cal eProcure, California State website, they have an excellent website and probably one of the easiest to use that talks, that shows you how you can go in, you can search for contracts, you can look at things that they've done in the past, you can look at what's going on, 
current. This one's probably the better one out there as far as figuring everything out. Now, and marketing to state agencies and primes is pretty much the same as marketing to the federal government. You're going to need your elevator speech, your capability statement, um, follow up with them regularly. And if somebody does respond to you, please respond back. I think that's just one of the basic rules of etiquette in any business dealing. So now what I did is I went online and this might be what works for you between now and Friday. Instead of going to the government websites we just went over, which are wonderful to maintain and go through on a regular basis, I went through and just Googled a couple of the companies or agencies that are going to be there with us on Friday. The first one I Googled was, this, was the California State Highway Patrol, just to see what they had out there and how difficult this was gonna be. Well, the California State Highway Patrol has a small business liaison officer who's probably going to be with us on Friday. And on all of these, when I Googled them and I got into the particular agency, I just hit their search bar up on the top right and put in small business and was led directly to where I needed to go. So some of the commodities that the um, California Highway Patrol purchases are ammunition, amu animal service, automobiles, batteries, bicycles, blankets, books, um, camper shells, cameras, carpeting, child safety seats, construction, emergency medical supplies, film, first aid kits, all types of food and food service and food service equipment, forklifts, um, generators, um, gloves, see what else here, uh, lumber, motorcycles, office equipment, office machines, office supplies, paint, paper, photo photocopiers, plumbing supplies, promotional items, and um, IT services, on and on and on. And now in the service, I did mention IT services, but they also have alarm and fire monitoring services badge repair, bicycle maintenance and repair, blueprinting services, business management and consulting services, um, calibration of specialized equipment, diesel generator, maintenance and repair, copier maintenance and repair, collection services, carpet installation, maintenance of restrooms and facilities, um, let's see what else here, hazardous waste removal, instructor services, there is paid team services, there is page after page after page of services that they do, do purchase. So then I looked up um, general services, no wait, let's go back. I looked up the Department of General Services in California and they have a wonderful website where they show you how to do business with the state of California. Then they list each of the state departments, you click on the individual state department and it takes you to what that particular department is purchasing. Okay, the another um, agency who's going to be there is the US General Services Administration. And in a nutshell, GSA is basically to the government like Amazon is to normal people, if that makes any sense at all. You go on GSA, you have to get a schedule to get on there, but once you're on there, individuals, and it's not only federal agencies now, they have a lot of agreements with, with states and utility companies and firefighters and that type of thing. They have these agreements in place where different agencies can go in and purchase from you. Okay, the US Coast Guard will be at the event on Friday. They have a small business individual who works for them, they have 13 different forecasts. They buy everything, things you wouldn't imagine that the Coast Guard would buy, but they buy everything because they're safety, security, um, they're on the water, they're all over the place. They also have a, a wonderful service where you can subscribe to notices and you can kind of pinpoint it down to what you're looking for. 
Okay. The Federal Service Administ Federal Aviation Administration has a small business office. They sponsor events. You can subscribe to to them to have events sent directly to you. And also they put out an incredible procurement forecast, which is so long. I went to print it out so I could read some things to you, but after I went through almost half a ream of paper, I ended up having to, sh to stop the printing because it was just too much, too much volume. They, um, let's see, in California, just a couple of different things. They're doing electrical, Corruption and rewiring lighting fixtures in Fremont, install and upgrade basement floor drains in Palmdale, fire protection restoration in Palmdale, refurbish plum plumbing and bathroom in Palmdale. Poor Palmdale. Um, the very the, the wonderful thing about the FAA is with each of the items that they're saying that they're procuring. They give you the name and the telephone number of the point of contact. So this is an added bonus for you. you you're going past the gatekeeper and right into the agency where you're going to be able to connect with someone who is who is responsible for that particular procurement. And I know that Christina talked about the PTAC free bid matching service at the beginning of our call and for those of you who don't have it this is this is really amazing everybody that i worked with who signed up for it or who has it has written back and been extremely grateful that they that they were able to get this and remember that if the first time we set this up with you it doesn't quite match what you want you can call your procurement specialist back and we can go in and we can fine tune it to make it fit what your needs are. One other group that's going to be there is Deutscher Group, and they, um, on their website, they do marine construction, but they have a very, very active um, small business person. I worked quite a bit with the one who just recently retired, and the individual who is out there working now um, i met her briefly and she seems to be just as committed as the previous individuals they want you to certify on their website which is pretty easy to do and they'll be there on friday to help you with the process if you have any questions but they are some who definitely walk the talk and make sure that they bring small businesses into their company to work with them AT&T is going to be there, um, Lisa Castillo, and I've worked with her for a number of years. She is a person with a passion for what she does. Um, and here on the slide are some of the areas of opportunity that they, they have posted currently. They do mention that it can take years to develop a relationship, which is probably the most honest thing I've seen on a website, because that can be true. That's why in a lot of cases, when you're attending these events, it's imperative that you not only are talking to the people behind the tables, behind the booths, but you're talking and networking with other people like yourself so you can meet teaming partners, so you can look for other opportunities with different people. Half of the networking at or more at these events ends up between our PTAC clients themselves. Because there might be a project coming up that you or someone else knows about that is too big for you as a small business. But if you had a partner who had some of the skills and resources that you yourself don't possess, it might be entirely feasible with the two of you to tackle that and grow your companies and your expertise and your experience with a teaming partner. Okay. So what is your next step? Okay. So take a look at attending. There's, there's a lot more available besides just clients and agencies. There are some firms, there's some, some people there like the North Cal PTAC and others who are gonna be there to help you out also. My suggestion, I would suggest in order to take the stress off yourself in going to this, especially if it's your first time, that you pick 
three that you definitely want to talk to. And make sure you talk to those three, but don't stop and leave when you finish talking to those three individuals. Make sure that you get out there and you talk to others because everything else is just frosting on the cake for you. And it gives you opportunity to expand in ways that you won't even understand until somebody a year from now calls you up and says, hey, remember that conference we were at and you were there? So you never know. I We've already had a, a webinar about your capability statement and your elevator speech and well about your capability statement, but I'm going to take a couple minutes and talk about your elevator speech and some ways that you can make that stand out a little bit. Most small businesses find the elevator speech to be the most awkward part of marketing, and it's hard. Even myself, um, when I help small businesses, I find it really hard to do. It's, but that doesn't mean that it's not doable. If you say what everyone else says, you're gonna be forgettable. Okay, now the key to um, a successful elevator speech is to, to repeat it, to fine tune it, to practice it on other people until it becomes as common and, and easy for you as saying, hi, my name is Mary Jo Juarez. And I work for Northern California PTAC. And this is, these are the services we provide, okay? With your elevator speech, you have 30 seconds or less to capture someone's interest. So initially, well, actually, you need to have a couple of different elevator speeches. You need to have a short one that's a couple of short, pithy, a pithy sentence or two that explains what you do for a living. You're not supposed to tell people everything all at once. It's supposed to be a conversation starter. It's in response to what do you do, but more correctly, what can you do for me? Okay, your elevator speech is a living tool, as I mentioned, that must be adjusted depending upon your audience and your situation. One of my dear friends who has her own business, she retired from the government also, and her, and what she does is when companies get into trouble with the federal government in particular, she helps them get them out, she helps them to get out of trouble. So we worked and we worked on her elevator speech because it's really an uncomfortable thing even for her and I to still do, but we realized that you have to go through it to get to it. And her elevator speech is when you step in it, I'll help you out. And that's exactly what she does. And that catches her attention and then usually that generates questions, which is what you want to have happen with your elevator speech. You want other people to be asking you questions as you, as a result of your elevator speech. So your elevator speech needs to be focused on the listener, not on the presenter. You don't always, sometimes it's really hard to differentiate between what you want to say and what they need to hear. And to be honest with you, sometimes when I go to these events, I'll spend a little bit of time just listening to what people are saying and pick up tips and see what works and what doesn't work. You can watch people and, and you can tell by body language of people what is working and what is not working. Don't talk about the process in your elevator speech. Focus on the results. In other words, if someone asks you what time it is, don't tell them how the watch works. Okay, use examples to follow on to that. Use examples, analogies, metaphors to create verbal pictures. A quick story will stick in somebody's mind or a metaphor will stick in somebody's mind much longer than a blah, blah, blah. We talked about developing a catchphrase how you make people think or feel about your services are intangibles that can be powerful and persuasive elements. And let's think about that for a minute, because that brings into that brings into focus your whole being as you're approaching somebody at the table. 
walk up, even though, you know, even though you may not feel this, sometimes you have to act it to start feeling it. So walk up to the people at the table, put your hand out if you're comfortable doing that. Say, hi, my name is so-and-so and I'm with Belly Enterprise. I'm a woman-owned small business and we specialize in, or your catchphrase, or whatever else it is that you do. But if you need to take a deep breath before you go up and approach that table, take a deep breath, pull on your confidence, Batman suit or whatever superhero that you need to do this. I can tell you from watching clients and being on the other side of the table, there are a couple of different groups of people who will come up to me when I was doing this. The first one are those people who had to come up and shake my hand and blurt out everything so fast and then run on to the next person. And I was kind of raising my hand in the air, but wait a minute, I have a question and you're already gone to the next table. So take your time, speak to me, tell me you know, a little bit about, I'm interested in your company more than I am at you at this point because it's probably pretty busy and there might be a line behind you. Doesn't mean I'm not interested in you, but we can always connect later if the connection is there. The second group of people that I see are those that approach and you can tell by their, by their eyes that they're absolutely terrified to come up. And I would often say, oh, come on up, come on up and talk to me. But once you get them talking, they're extremely knowledgeable about their business. All of us go through stage fright. All of us are uncomfortable and to some degree in meeting people it's getting out of our box but i can assure you that when you get up in the morning on friday before you go to this event you're going to be one person when you will leave that event on friday you're going to be a completely different person an expanded person and with an expanded business due to the people that you've met and the connections that you've made so just kind of, you know, think about your approach when you're going up. Stop and watch people. Um, often when um, I was with the, at times, I would even take somebody who was really nervous about approaching and go around with them and help them a first time or two. Everybody behind the table understands what it's, what it's like to go through that because believe me, sometimes when you're behind the table and you don't have the answer, that can be nerve wracking on you also. Be sure you know who you're trying to reach. And that goes back to doing some market research and at least focusing on those other, on the top three. And then let everybody else be gravy. If you meet somebody in the hallway and you introduce yourselves and just get to know each other, you never know when that connection may become important to you. Okay, so on my slide it says be open to meeting and greeting everybody. And I think we kind of talked about that. Follow up with your commitments. Okay, so when you're talking to me and I'm behind the booth, you want to end the conversation, however short or however long it is. If I'm someone that you want to connect with, end the conversation with me with a question. Can I follow up with you? Do you prefer that I contact you through email, by phone, or by text? How often would you like me to check back in with you? How soon should I check back in with you? What days are the best days of the week for me to check back in with you? And what's the best method to do it? Then you have something to write down. You have a commitment between the two of you so that, in essence, the conversation's closed. It's not just a handshake and move on, if, if that makes sense. And whatever it is that you agree to with that individual, Follow up with that commitment. If you say you're going to send them an email with your capability statement or additional information about your company within two days, please do it because you totally invalidate yourself when you don't keep those commitments at these conferences. And last, use your manners, be respectful, and have fun. And this, um, I'm going to speak for just a moment about this. Um, because as somebody who was behind the booth, don't ask me to hold all of your papers or your briefcase while you're searching for a pencil. Um, at one point, I even had somebody ask me to hold her baby, which was wet, 
um, at that particular moment. It was not a not a really good moment while we were at an at a, an event. So use your manners. Speak slowly. Speak loud enough so they can hear you. Um, a good indication is if somebody behind the booth has glasses and a little bit of white hair, you might have to up your tone a little bit so they can hear you, so they're not embarrassed um, to ask you to repeat yourself. But anyway, some basic manners go a long way. And most important, have fun. Thank you. Okay. So we will move on to questions. Thank you so much, Mary Jo. Um, and during the session, there were a couple questions about just about the expo in general. Um, it will be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. this Friday. And if you look in the chat, you can see a link to register. You'll also be receiving an email at around 11 o'clock with a survey to tell us how the webinar was today. And it will also have a link to register for the expo. Okay, so the first question um, I saw, uh, Deirdre asked, I'm a life coach. Are my services needed? I'm looking to do team building, staff development, and one-on-one -on -one corporate coaching. You know, my, my answer to that would, just from the market research I did with um, several of these, would be to go, go in and take a look. Um, with the life coach, I didn't see anything specifically spelled out as life coach, but I saw things that possibly could be as business and development services with these with these agencies. And I know the couple of the agencies up here in Washington State where I am um, do contract through personal services and for for life coach services for their for their people, so I w I personally would need to do a little bit more research on that, Christina, to act answer that completely accurately for this particular event. And uh, Deirdre, we can uh, you know I'm not sure how much time we'll have this week. We're all pretty hectic getting ready for the webinar, or I'm sorry, the expo and traveling to the expo. Um, but you can definitely register for services, and we'll do our best. To, um, to connect with you as soon as possible to, to do some market research individually with you. And that's an offer to everybody, of course. Right, and Deirdre, actually, some of the, and if it's not the agencies and the primes, some of the other participants, you know, like yourself out there in the, in the event might be looking for life coach services. You know, who knows? Some of the other PTAC clients thought. Okay, so the next question, I am producing an environmental education board game. Are there any government agencies that purchase educational tools? And the answer to that is yes. Um, pretty much every agency in some way, shape, or form, or a lot of them will look for educational tools. Um, a, trying to think, as, a lot of times it's it's webinars and classes and that type of thing. But um, again, that would be something where we would need to work with you maybe a little bit on that to get that fine-tuned. Okay, and someone asked, we have applied for WOSB WeBank certification but have not received the certification approval yet. Can we claim to be a woman-owned business, which we are? Would it be feasible to mention that? Um, if you are a woman-owned business, you can definitely say you are a woman-owned business, and I would just say that your WeBank um, certification is pending. That's good, good advice. Um, someone asked if architecture and design services are purchased. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mary Jo, talk more. Yes, yeah. absolutely, and by any by any number of agencies, definitely. Um, I, I'm just looking through the list here, and and there were several I didn't even expect that were would be produce that would be um, purchasing that that are so definitely. Um, I think it would be important to go in and do some research 
because A and E services can vary so much in what you do, you know, and the, the type of work that you do. You're probably going to have to go in and do a little bit of research, or when you get to the event, talk, start talking to people and and figure out exactly who it is that's purchasing exactly what you're looking at. And just a reminder that these slides and the recording are going to be available, so you can look back at the websites that Mary Jo recommended, like said, BizOps. Um, Cal Eprocure, sites like that to, um, to look into what agencies buy ahead of time. Okay, so another question, this is from John, are there any agencies that deal with purchasing for the National Parks gift shop? Is that sourced from within the government or there's, is there an outside agency that they work with? You know, that's a really good question, and Christina, I don't know the answer to that, but I bet if you um, Googled the National Park Service and and spent, you know, took a little bit of time looking in there, I um, I bet you'd find at least an answer, and if, and if not, I, you know, we'd be happy to help you with that I, again. So we have a lot of specific questions. Um, yeah. Another Someone's asking about for coffee, which agencies would be my best target? Well, the Highway Patrol was one that listed food and food products. I, there's, it's it's so hard to to deal with specifics right now on this call because we we haven't I I haven't gone in and looked at all of them, and even the ones that I looked at have purchased you know that have have purchased so much that it's pretty. Um, it's pretty amazing. The the FAA, oh my gosh, think of those people in the control towers. They do have food purchases on their website also. If anybody needs coffee, probably the FAA and the California State Highway Patrol do. Good heavens. Another question from Rhett. I have an art consulting company. Are any agencies interested in developing art programs from their facilities? I, I will answer that at least for um, uh, someone else mentioned CDCR. Event, uh, unfortunately, CDCR, the California Department of Corrections, will not be attending. She just let me know on Friday that um, she has a last minute conflict that she cannot attend. So the prisons will not be there. But I know that the prisons have a lot of opportunities for art programs, um, specifically Pelican Bay State Prison, which is way far north. It's near where I am here, near the Oregon border. They're always looking for um, art programs, and, and all of the prisons are. Um, that's one opportunity. Mary Jo, can you think of others? Yeah, the other opportunities that I can think of is any agency. This might be GSA. I'm just trying, I'm looking at the list, trying to figure out who. But any agency that has hospitals or where the public comes in on a fairly regular basis, a few years ago, I helped an artist get a contract with our um, local naval hospital, for instance, where she went in and actually did um, relief-type plaster um, uh, sculptures in the walls, especially where the kids were. Um, so I think that really any agency, um, the U.S. Forest Service, I've occasionally seen art um, there, but it's been for signs and that type of thing. Um, with the Forest Service, it's, it's they buy everything. It's just a matter of of doing some research and figuring out the Department of Veterans Affairs. Okay, there's a hospital for you. Um, when you go into the, if you've ever been into one of the Department of Veteran Affairs hospitals, they they do use a lot of art. A lot of their buildings are older. They're not necessarily new and new, and they brighten them up with a lot of art. Um, and someone asked if they could get the list of exhibitors for San Ramon, I just replied to everybody with a link to the registration page where the most current list of exhibitors is. That will be updated um, if there's any last minute changes, but we're pretty sure that's the final list now. Um, you'll also be receiving that link via email um, at around 11 o'clock. Okay, what is the name of the paid subscription mentioned in the beginning? I think you're asking about GovSpend. So that's a subscription um, that we pay for. We only have two licenses, so we aren't able to share our login information. But as a PTAC client, we can access that with you, um, and uh, we can pull reports for you too. So again, that's GovSpend. 
which are the larger purchases of a and &E services typically? Well, I'll say Caltrans buys a ton of a and &E. Right. Um, anyone else, Mary Jo? I mean, anyone that does construction. So you can actually pull, there's a list um, that you can pull. If you just Google Cal E-Procure State Advocates or something like that, there's a list of all of the advocates. Um, and I can help you if you want to contact me or reply to that email at 11 o'clock. I can help you find that. Um, if you pull that list, you can actually see there's a column for does it, it's a list of every agency and their advocate, and there's a column for if they purchase construction services or not. So technically, generally, if they buy construction services, they're going to be buying A and E services too. You can sort and find out which agencies in the state by construction services. And also, don't forget about going to the prime contractors who do the construction services, the Dutra Group and Swimmerton. Ooh, yeah. um, um, just looking at them, because the government doesn't always, the government very seldom will do the design of any renovation or any new buildings or anything that they're, that they're they're doing um so the 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 construction and the, and the design services are generally part of the construction contract because that way they don't have to put out two different contracts number one and it's really hard if you do have a design contract already completed to have the construction company sometimes to go in and and put that that in place it's it, it causes more heartburn so Check in with the construction companies that'll be at the event also. Great, great suggestion. Um, is it okay to bring flyers to provide to the agency contacts at the expo or do they prefer not to carry back papers? I would suggest that you absolutely have your capability statement ready and bring it with you. Some of them, you can ask them. That's a question that might generate some conversation for you. Would you like a hard copy of the capability statement or would you like, or would you prefer I email it to you? Some of them will take it and carry it back and some will, some will say both. And then some of course will just prefer that you do the email, but I would definitely suggest you bring me your business cards, your capability statement, and have your elevator speech ready. Another question about, um, for the environmental education board games, I'd love to have them in schools. Are there agencies that purchase for the school system? Um, and Mary Jo, correct me, or please add on, but um, the school systems buy for themselves. They are government agencies themselves. And we will have, I think that there's only one off the top of my head, one school district that will be there. Um, it's uh, the San Jose Evergreen Community College School District. Um, they will be there at the expo. And I think that's the only one at this time, but um, that GovSpend tool that I was talking about can actually look into federal, state, local, and school district purchasing. So you can use that with your procurement specialist to identify which school district might have bought similar educational board games in the past. I agree. Okay, one more question for now. We are a supplier of hardware and fasteners. Who should I focus on speaking with at the expo? Caltrans, for sure. Who else? Yeah. Caltrans, the, the, just a few that I looked at, the Department of um, General Services. You might want to go in there and look at all yeah. the departments and see what they buy. And the California Highway Patrol buys a lot of unusual things. Um, the FAA, I'm not so sure about, but the Coast Guard definitely. Um, you know, they have all kinds of things that they need to keep keep in place. So that would be a really good one for you. I just want to add that we, I, I know a a business who provided all of the fasteners for the the Bay Bridge. I think it was the Bay Bridge when they rebuilt the Bay Bridge. I mean, just imagine how many fasteners they need for that Bay Bridge. Mm -hmm. How many sprues. So that's, um, you can, I, I know those are tiny purchases, maybe pennies for one fastener or one screw, but that kind of purchase can really add up. Yes. Um, do government agencies accept unsolicited proposals for unique services? That comes from Odell McQueen. 
and that is a tough question because it almost depends upon the agency. Um, that might be good for a one-on-one -on -one, um, conversation um, to get you some more accurate, uh, better accurate response with that because it really kind of depends on what you're doing and what agency it is that you want to work with if you even know some of them are and some of them aren't. Um, that being said, the Air Force, Christina, remember the Air Force has yeah. got those, I, what are they called? Do they call them pitch days? Something like that. It reminded me of a Shark Tank type yes. event. Yes, where you are, they, they have them on Fed Biz Ops and they, I believe they've done two of them now where they ask you to submit a white paper or a PowerPoint and then they, they review those and they decide who gets to come and pitch to them and then they award um, dollars to the companies they decide on on the spot. So it's kind of a new way of contracting. Um, I would say basically the answer to the question is yes, but it'll take some work to get you in the right direction. All right, Deirdre asks, is the capability statement a specific form? And do you want to start with that, Christina, and then I'll... Sure. Yeah, so first, in. we did um, we did do a, a webinar on capability statements last Tuesday. We recorded that. We have the slides all on our website. So it's not a specific form, per se, but it's in a specific format. It's one page. Uh, it can be one page front and back, but, I mean, that's, that's the biggest rule. Is it, they don't want to have a 25-page stapled packet to read. These people are busy, 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 and you want it... You want to get as um, you want to make them understand what you do in the smallest number of words and pictures. <laughs> yes, um, very well put. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on our website, you, there's a link to um, not only the the webinar that we did slides, but there's also a link to a template um, that is. That's on our website under resources, NorCalTTAC.org. Click on resources and then capability statement. And the most important thing really about the capability statement is that is a document that the individual behind the booth is going to take back with them and it's going to be their reminder of you and what you provide and who you are. So make sure that you include your certifications and any codes, whether it's a DUNS number, a CAGE code, a California um, uh, state code, any codes that are important to them, make it easy on the reader. That's the key. Use pictures instead of a bunch of words, like Christina said, so that they can get it at a glance. For instance, if you're an electrical contractor, there's a huge difference between whether you do electrical work in a house or you do high voltage electrical work. And a picture is going to show the individual immediately what it is you do. Okay, neither one is right or wrong. I'm just using it for, simply to show the difference and how important the picture is. And so the final question that I see now, everybody squeeze your last minute questions in because we have just two minutes left. Um, what is the typical lead time for agencies to post their RFP and look, for, look to find a vendor? Is it usually 30 days or what does it look like? I would, I would say it varies. I would say 30 days is a good um, standard. What do you think, Christina? I'm trying to think of all the state, local, federal, and everything all in, all in one, and it can vary. Yeah, typically 30 days. I've definitely seen some that are much shorter. Yes. Um, I, I gotta say, though, Barry Joe, tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like when you see one that's only open for a week, that they often know exactly who they're going to award it to already, and they're just trying to, to rush it along. I don't know. Um, yeah, and trying to meet all the regulations and everything that they need yeah. to meet. So often, I mean, unless you're a perfect fit for one of those that you see they're only giving you a week or something, I, I discourage people from from wasting their time. I mean, deciding which opportunities to bid on is, is an art in itself. You don't want to bid on everything. Yes, <laughs> yes because you'll be wasting a, a great amount of time. But you're right. That's actually very true. So I don't see any more questions. Um, let's see. Oh, someone just, a, a couple people, Mary Jo said, thanks for another great webinar. Great webinar. So great job, Mary Jo. Um, so, so happy to have you. Thank activity. you. Thank you, Christina. You're pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
Um, and uh, so the slides will be posted. Um, oh, just one more question. Someone said, do we get the question? Do I'm not really sure what you, you mean, like a copy of the, the questions. Um, you will get a copy of the slides. Um, you'll get a copy of the webinar recording, so you can listen to all of the questions and their answers all over again. Um, that will be posted to our website, and if you are registered for the webinar, you'll get a link. Uh, it should have been emailed just now. Um, it's at norcalptac.org slash webinars for those of you listening later. And I think that's it. So, oh, that email that you get, feel free to reply and you can ask us some more questions. I'll loop in Mary Jo if you have more specific questions. Sign up to be a client for more individualized service. And thanks for joining us. Have a great thanks. day. Thank you.